actually not that great. Let's uh, get started. Welcome again to my panel, former editor of the Labour list, Peter Edwards, and GB News contributor and former Brexit party MEP, Martin Daubeny. Right, so I'm going to start with you, Peter, because I'm suspecting a you in support of this alarm system. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? What's your view? Uh, I think it's a good thing. I don't feel it's an invasion of privacy. Uh, it will help to keep us all safer. It's uh, obviously, it doesn't protect against everything, but mm. it spreads awareness of certain dangers. Mm. I think Oliver Dowden, uh, effectively Deputy Prime Minister, struck a fairly cautious note, used that phrase, a high bar for it to be used, so it's not going to be um, used too often because we don't want to spread uh, anxiety. But bearing in mind that terrorist attacks have often been in very crowded places like Manchester Arena in recent years, it seems a sensible thing to bring in. It's interesting you bring that up because when, when that happened, I don't think they knew what they were doing then. That was mm. a bit of a farce, wasn't it? So I don't know whether they would have even known to press the alarm in time. Martin, what do you think? Yeah, it's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. In countries where they have hurricanes, proper wildfires, extreme weather, tsunamis, perhaps. But in Britain, you, know, you barely struggle to, to shake a plate off a wall during an earthquake. We don't get wildfires. If we get a bit of rain, then we can look out the window and see it. This notion we need to be told by the state that unless you get a beep on your phone, you're going to sit there and passively die is cretinous. And actually, I think it's an extension of, of a rotten mindset, a totalitarian mindset we saw step in during lockdowns. Um, the state is overreaching, telling us what to do, and people are becoming more bovine and accepting that they have to be told by the state what to do or they cannot function. And what, that's where I think the real problem is. Um, I muted mine, I, I went in and turned off my alerts. I didn't get it, and I, I, I urge everyone to do the same. The fact Why, that though? I mean, like, Peter's suggesting that if there's a big incident, um, like, OK, so wild weather, that is one thing, although they are... I don't know whether they're trying to scare us into thinking, the climate is changing, get well, ready for... Well, that, I don't know, but, but... I think that is a part of it, this, this idea that a catastrophe is but a heartbeat away, I think is, is a crucial part of what the government wants us to believe. As far as terrorism goes, um, as I understand it, they wouldn't put an alert out mm. during a terrorist incident in case it alerted the terrorists, mm. that they've been rumbled, as it were. So I think it's a complete and utter overreach, and we don't need it. It has no place in a free society. What about, um, look, Peter, what about, for example, we know that Matt Hancock, when it came to the COVID thing, he, they created a system to deliberately scare people more yeah. so that we would be submissive. And do, do, is Martin's point actually quite valid that this is a way of kind of making us more submissive as we became that way during COVID? Uh, no, I disagree. So first of all, Matt Hancock just used very loose and inappropriate language on, on WhatsApp uh, during the pandemic, which wasn't the right thing to do. But no, no, but the point there I'm making is that they deliberately used alarmist um, ideology in a sense to get people to be scared yeah. so that we'd, we'd participate. Yeah, I wouldn't call it ideology, but you're right, Matt Hancock well, did refer yeah. on a WhatsApp... Look, we're agreeing. Matt Hancock did refer on WhatsApp to, I think, scaring the pants off people or something similar like mm. that. Clearly a throwaway remark and not, not a good one mm. at all. I'd imagine, just as with fire and Coast Guard and terrorism, it's not going to be politicians in operational control. It will be qualified um, individuals. Mm. Well, I just, just had a message from somebody, um, one of my friends, who said that even though her phone was ready, nothing happened on yeah. her phone. Nothing happened on that day. Yeah, and I think qualified experts is what got us into the mess in, in mm. COVID. I mean, we, we trusted experts. Proved to be completely wrong. Um, all, everything fell apart from, from, from epidemiology to, to the vaccines and all the rest of it. And so the idea that, that we need to be spoon-fed our survival. So if you don't alert, if you don't change this, then, like I say, you're going to sit there like a frog in a pan and boil to death. Well, it, it, it won't what, what about... OK, so we are getting this sort of nuclear threat as well, in a sense, aren't we, really, that the, we've had Vladimir Putin making threats towards this country with regard to nuclear strikes. Um, and, of course, <clears throat> we know that he's apparently building Satan II or whatever he's calling it. Mm. Um, is this not... Do you think that perhaps there's a, they're worried about that? Well, if the four-minute warning came, I could, <laughs> think of better, I could think of far more fun <laughs> things to do than sit around worrying about my phone alerts. I think in the case of a nuclear war, it'd be over so quick. And what, what difference would an alert make? Well, I don't know. I mean, th th is there an argument for that, Peter, at all, with regard to nuclear attacks and things like that? Well, thankfully, we're not in the realms of a nuclear war, and I'm not sure if that was a, a no, but, remark but, in jest. Well, you I'm, might I'm, laugh. Hold on, you've got to let me finish the laugh. answer. You'll tell laugh. me I'm wrong. Right. We're not on the brink of nuclear war, and I'm sure your view viewers realise we're not on the brink of nuclear war. Nuclear war... Let's not talk about nuclear war. Because Why? I've asked the question. I'm, you're going to answer that, it. We, we're not in that situation. Yeah, the, but, but what I'm saying is, do you think that they are thinking ahead and getting us prepared for potentially any form of war? I mean, look, there used to be war sirens, so it's not funny. This could mm. be the modern-day version of a war siren. Do you not think that there's, they are thinking about that as well? I think we've got to be sober about these things. You know, Britain hasn't had a war um, on its own borders for se several decades since 
World War II. But I think there is a place. Uh, clearly, it's not going to be. It's or less likely to be for extreme weather events of the like you get in a. America, where there seem to be frequent tornadoes. So mm. I think that the usage is going to be a bit different, and I'd imagine it's going to be um, refined over time. Mm. But let me give you a couple of quick examples. My, my first newspaper job was in Cumbria, and in the last 20 years, there have been several extremely dangerous floods in Cumbria and terribly a mass shooting as well. So I think um, that's why I treat these things um, in, in a fairly sober manner. A anything that helps us stay safe, I think, is a good thing. But then when I mentioned war, you said, oh, we're not on the brink of that, and that would be something that would, in a sense, keep us safe. You, didn't, you don't think that's a possibility? Am I being extremist? No, I, I just think that it's, it's an extension of the fact that we seem to rely on our phones for everything. Like, we can't do anything without our phones, and we, we got by for millennia without this. And I do think it is just more scare and shock tactics. The government wants to keep us in a state of fear because when we're scared, we're easy to control. And, and when we're easy to control, then we just obey. And I'm surprised that someone from the, from the left is, is, is so, so kind of subservient <coughs> to, to a, a Tory policy to scare the heck out of us. Mm -hmm. Why don't we push back against totalitarian control? That's what got us into the mess during lockdown. When we, all, we, we, all, we all kind of lamely just followed orders. Well, let me ask that question. So, first of all, I think party politics doesn't have to touch everything. You know, you called it a Tory policy, but I'd be very surprised if an incoming Labour government scrapped <clears> it, but, but we'll wait and see what they say. But I really don't believe um, party politics has to touch everything, and I think the kind of viewers might get a bit frustrated if that did. But also, don't, I don't think it's about control. What is wrong with um, trying innovations that might keep us safer? Well, what is wrong with them indeed? Uh, potentially it may keep us safer, maybe it won't. Maybe it's a, a way as a land grab on our mobile phones and a whole sort of... But apparently there's no data collection within it, it just comes straight to your phone. It's done in other countries as well. But what's your views? Uh, GBviews at gbnews.uk or tweet me at GBnews.